this COVID-19 curve in most places has peaked. Businesses, restaurants are starting to open back up again. I was glad to finally find a barbershop open. I was afraid I was going to have to braid my hair. Couldn't get it cut. Finally got it cut. And as churches, we are eager to, and I'm not going to use the word reopen. Sam has been using the word regather to describe this. And I like that. Now, Sam Rohr is with me as co-host of the program today. But Sam, could I put you for just a moment in the guest's chair and ask you why you have described the church not as reopening, but as regathering? Tell us why. Keith, absolutely. And I think you've touched on it there, but even as we did on the Zoom conference call with a lot of pastors just the other day, on this matter of regathering, we had Matt Staver from Liberty Council, and we talked about this. But fundamentally, we have to understand that the governors of the states, the president, whoever they may be, the executive branch, has no constitutional authority to tell churches how they worship, their mode of worship, their form of worship, or any of that. So that's a first part. And the other part I'm saying is that because of that, the governors cannot constitutionally before God tell a church they cannot meet. So the regathering part of it is that, as you say, churches, pastors saying, all right, we have an issue here. We don't fully understand this virus. We don't want to put our people in harm's way. We will voluntarily, on request, by recommendation, We are going to, though, voluntarily do that. We are not doing so. We're not closing our doors. We are not ceasing to worship because we have told to. And that's a very, very, very important part, Keith, even as we talk now with our guest today and Gary relative to decisions by churches and pastors across the country to, again, regather in the midst of confusing directives coming out of many of our states and our governors. Well, it is very pertinent and important, Sam. Thank you. You said that very well. The church in reality is people. It's not the building where we meet. And so in reality, as I've thought of a word to describe what the church has done, the church in reality has simply disassembled, no longer meeting. Now, don't mix my words up. It's not dissembled. That's a whole different animal. We have disassembled. We have stopped meeting voluntarily. We approach this from a biblical worldview. A secular worldview only sees what it calls a novel coronavirus, looking for global responses. That's got its own danger moving forward. But we see this virus as just the result of the curse of sin under which all of humanity rests. And actually, the disassembling of a church for something like this is not novel. It's happened before. In the Spanish flu era, 1917, 18, and 19, the churches did the same thing, and they made it clear that it was voluntary on their part. 